space. That's an interesting point you bring up about even like most of the world is event driven around us. I think when we're trying to find examples for event driven versus this kind of request response thing, the real world examples for request response are kind of, you find them in pockets, like, like a phone call perhaps, or even a phone call may, might not be a good example. So it's, it's hard to find places where things aren't even driven in the real world. But you also brought up a valid point that like when, when I was starting to learn programming, it was about, okay, I write a program where you accept an input mm -hmm. and then you process it and then you return a response. And right. we didn't do a lot of GUI programming when I was learning Java, it's probably because of the GUI limitations of Java, or at least at the time. I went into web programming and then it was again, like you get a request, you process it, you handle a response. So 10 years, 15 years of doing that, that request response model is kind of burnt into my brain. Right. So do you, do you feel that that's a common challenge you see for people trying to understand event-driven architecture or trying to venture into event-driven architecture? They kind of have to break these habits of always thinking request response. Yeah, I, I see it. And it's a great distinction you bring up as well of sort of I2 coming out of the more backend Java space versus people that, for instance, come out of UI programming where UX is all about sort of handling events, right, that the user is actually doing. So when you talk to event-driven people around that are UX background, they're like, yeah, that's like what we do all the time. Right now, they're, they're doing it more from a browser perspective, not an entire system perspective. But then those of us that are sort of backend I, I tend to, again, sort of think it arrives in our heads, sort of in the, when you're first learning to program and everything's a function, right? But then even sort of the way industry has evolved from a system to system communication perspective, I mean, really to go old, I'm not this old, but go all the way back to sort of like remote method invocation with Corva, right? Uh -huh. It's always sort of been, and then SOAP was really invoking a method remotely as well. And right. REST is kind of like invoking a method remote. Right. All of this sort of has this overall backing of then also the database, which is I'm going to do CRUD operations on databases, which tend to, again, have sort of a response type of a par paradigm. And I think all of this has sort of led us to just become pretty hardwired into for whatever activity I'm doing, I'm going to make a request and a reply. And if it is event driven, well, I'll just pull that endpoint until I find the change that I'm looking for and then I'll act on it versus sort of looking at the world in a little bit of a different way and going, hmm, what if I just tell, what if I just announce what I'm interested in and then you tell me when something's happens and then I'm just going to basically be triggered on that. And again, it's also interesting because when you talk to database people, especially, I guess you could say older database people that wrote database triggers, right? Database right. triggers were inherently event driven, but exactly. way down in the database layer. So it's funny, very high up the stack with UI sort of has the event driven paradigm and very low down the database bat have had event driven paradigm and everything in the middle somehow sort of, I think a lot of it just because of tooling and the way we think has sort of missed that boat over the years. 